Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gunner Magazine, Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at a Range. We've got some really exciting news. The first video that we've got coming out in April will be the HW97 TX200 Ultimate Smackdown. Now, I need some help from you guys. What do you think we should test within the Smackdown? We're not going to go out and shoot a competition because that's subjective. It comes down to whether or not the fat bit behind the trigger can hit the targets, which at the moment he can't. So we're looking for something that is quantifiable. So if you've got any ideas, please put them in the comments below or drop me an email and we'll see what we can do. Why are we waiting till April? Well, I'll be perfectly honest with you, we've got a channel sponsor. Someone has been crazy enough to look at what we do here and think, I want to be a part of that. Now, we're going to announce the channel sponsor in April. And the great news is they want to leave us alone. They just want to sponsor the channel, have their name put up in the credits, but there is going to be no outside influence to what we do here. So it's going to be the same old rubbish, the same old me just talking and learning as we go. So we're not going to be doing product placements and stuff like that. But if they say, if they send us some stuff to review, then we're going to be 100% open and honest with you and say, look, you know, we've been sent this, let's have a look at it and we'll go through it waltz and all. Apparently they're a really good bunch of people, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, the other good bit of news is April is we've got some new opening credits. We're going to look professional. Actually, no, we're not going to look professional. We never look professional, but we've got some new opening credits to tie in. So we can, uh, we'll change the music a bit and we'll have a bit of the same old rubbish. So what are we doing today? Well, one of the biggest questions that I get asked is Gary I'm thinking about getting into the sport of air gunning I might have come from full bore or shotguns or I've never shot before what do I buy do I buy a PCP do I buy a Springer do I buy a gas ram do I buy a semi recoiling Diana 54 um, what should I buy as my first gun and that's what we're going to talk about today what should you buy as your first rifle welcome to life at the range It's a really interesting question. What should you have as your first gun? When I was first getting into the sport, everyone said to me, Gary, go and buy a Springer. Go and buy a spring gun. It will teach you great technique. It will enable you to build up your skill. And you know, that's the first thing, first thing to do. Other people said, look, go and buy a cheap, uh, something off the rack, a Gamo Springer, a BSA Meteor or something like that and that'll be perfect to get started with. And I went home and I sat down and I bought a copy of Air Gun World and I started reading through it and oh, there was so much, you know, there were like massively expensive rifles and the, all the products, you know, that everything was great and, and I honestly didn't know. I was coming and going and scratching my head and I just didn't really understand. I then saw a thing online, I think I went on to Airgun BBS and I saw that there was a shoot at Lee Valley and I went down there and I met some nice people and I tried some rifles and that is when I, I first understood the difference between different types of rifles. I went and tried and that's the great thing about going to your local club. If you go to your local club there will be people there with spring guns, gas rams, PCPs, you name it, it will probably be there. From £3,000 XTI 50s to 200 quid Air Arms S200s and everything in between. And most people will be happy for you to hold the rifle or even take it on the range and have a shoot. As long as you don't start messing about with a scope because they get very upset with that and rightfully so. So my first piece of advice is not go to a gun shop is go to a club. In a gun shop, you can take a rifle off the rack, you can see if it fits you, you can see if it's too heavy, too light, whatever. That's great. But at a club, you don't have the pressure of somebody trying to sell you a rifle. Now you get great gun shops. You know, I'm a big fan of the Air Gun Centre in Rayleigh, really nice people. And they'll happily take rack, gun after gun off the rack and they'll let you have a go. But it's quite hard to lay down in the middle of the shop and put it in your shoulder and point it out the door. Um, it's much, much different laying down with a rifle than standing up and going, that seems nice. 
also chances are there won't be a scope on it. If, however, you're going to be a garden plinker, you know, you, you know, you've got your garden. We did a video the other day about shooting in the garden, and that's all you're going to want to do, which is absolutely fine. Again, look at what you want to do. If you've got a garden that's only 10 yards long, there is no point in buying a Steyr LG 110 at like two and a half thousand quid, a um, thousand pounds worth of Vortex Viper scope, if you're shooting at 10 yards. Unless you want to do sort of bench rest and absolute precision shooting. If you're going to be wanting to shoot spinners or targets or things like that, then maybe think about getting yourself a relatively cheap spring gun. If, if that will scratch your itch and you just want to sit in the garden on a bench or lay on the floor and, and pop off 40, 50 millimeter targets, there's nothing wrong with a 150 quid gamo springer. They're really nice. You know, I've shot a few. Um, 10 15 20 30 yards you're fine however if you feel that you want to be competitive which is like i was because i'm quite a competitive person and i'd come from a martial arts background and and i was looking to something to do now that my knees weren't you know that my knees were broken and you know and i I've, but i still wanted to compete there is no point in getting something really cheap because now you're not competing person to person, you're competing kit to kit. Now, if you go mid-range, a rifle, and I know I keep on banging on about it, but the S400, an S400 will shoot a fingernail size group at 40 yards. That's good enough to compete in any form of competition, well, sorry, HFT competition. Probably FT as well, but I'm not an FT shooter, so I tend not to comment on that. So things like the, the S400, the HW100 from Virarc, the, uh, the BSA Scorpion. But then also look at maybe some of the older guns. Things like the, the Daystate Mark III. Absolutely brilliant rifle in its day. Won many, many titles. The, the, uh, the Wolf, not this, so it's made by Wolf, uh, the uh, Hammerelli AR20s. It's a target rifle. Um, it's fully adjustable. They're actually really, really good. Um, there are lots of guns out there but what about the spring guns now as you know I'm a spring gun nut I love things that go twang my whole shooting life in the last six or seven years has been gauged around spring guns but unless you are really wanting to go with a springer I don't think it's the right rifle for somebody coming into the sport and I'll tell you why Tell you what, let's do let's let's shoot some targets and we'll explain why as we go along. I think that's gonna be better than me just standing here talking cobblers to you. Oh, and remember, please like, share, subscribe to the video, comments below. It really helps the algorithm and will boost us up the uh, up the charts and or whatever it is. I don't really understand how the YouTube algorithm works. All I know is it helps so if you could do that for us it'll be really appreciated so less yakking more shooty shooty okay so here we have my tx200 hunter carbine one of the best spring guns on the market um, this one is mine there are many like it but this one is mine absolutely beautiful rifle um, superbly accurate uh, reliable but not the easiest gun in the world to shoot. I'll give you for instance. First of all, you've got to cock it. Now, that's not a big problem, cocking a rifle. But if you're going to shoot a lot of shots in the garden, until you've built up a bit of strength in your shoulder, and it's a very repetitive um, movement that you need to do, it does actually take quite a bit of time and you do get a bit of a sore shoulder for a while but let's take the shot yeah you know, we're just going to aim at something at 30 yards so i'm laying here and i'm looking through the rifle i've got my head on the cheek piece and i'm ready to go safety is off here we go beautiful hit exactly where i wanted but what was I doing when I was laying down to take that shot? 
Well, I'm now laying here and I'm thinking about how much pressure I'm putting down onto the cheek piece. I'm trying to give equal pressure on the right hand side and the left hand side because I want to hold the rifle, but I mustn't grip the rifle. Because as the rifle shoots, I want it to recoil, but I do not want to stop it recoiling. Because it's a spring gun, I can't physically see the way the pellet flies because there's a vibration and the pellet goes and I can't follow the flight of the pellet. The trigger, I'm thinking, because it's quite a heavy trigger because it's a spring gun, because you've got to pull a sear down which will allow the, the spring to go forward. So I'm having to think about the trigger when I'm laying there. It's got some weight in it. I'm pulling it back and I'm pulling it back and then finally it goes. Relatively heavy trigger compared to a PCP. And then the rifle recoils and it comes back and I've got to think about trying to guide that, uh, guide that recoil. Now this is all fine. It's something that you can, lose, you can learn, and with experience, it becomes all automatic. Now on top of that, I'm now thinking about the target, how far away it is, if there's elevation, is there wind, is there stuff in between? There is a lot going on up here, down range. So I'm having to think about everything I have to do with the gun and everything I have to do down range. Now let's look at the PCP. Here we have the PCP. Now we're going to aim at the same target. Okay, Spitfire target. We're, uh, we're locked onto it. I'm not going to look through the scope. There we go, I killed the target. Because once you're set up on a PCP, you don't need to worry about the pressure holding it left and right. You don't need to worry about whether or not you've got lots of pressure pushing down or no pressure at all. There's virtually nothing moving within the gun. This is so much easier to shoot. So all I need to do is think about the factors downrange, wind, elevation, distance. If you want to get into shooting and you want to get into competition, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Learn with a PCP. Learn all your stuff downrange. Learn how to shoot. Learn trigger control, breathing, how to read the wind, how to read elevation, how to read distance. Learn your time with a good gun and a good scope. And then once you've mastered that, then move on to a spring gun. You will love it it will be a passion of yours very few air gunners own one rifle own a quality pcp and a quality springer but my view has always been learn with a pcp and you will get much better much quicker and then transition and i apologize to all the springer shooters out there who are now going to want to kill me Now, as we've spoken on more than one occasion, my shooting has not been great recently. It's been very frustrating for me, and that's part of the reason why I'm going back to PCP. Because the advantage with PCP, and certainly when you're having a few problems with your shooting, is you can, it's more consistent. With spring guns, they react massively different to temperatures. There's humidity in the air, if it's cold, if it's warm, uh, if, it's, if there's a Tuesday in the week, you can often find with a spring gun that they have moods. Um, when you buy a spring gun, you'll understand what I'm talking about. They're absolutely amazing, but they can also be incredibly frustrating. When you buy a quality PCP, you can just grab it out of the cabinet after six months, a good friend of mine, Alex Larkin, hadn't shot for like two or three months, grabbed his rifle out of the cabinet, didn't zero out, went out, won the competition, I think with a 56 or a 57. That's what you can do with a PCP. Very, very hard to do that with a spring gun. And when you just want to go out and shoot and not have to worry 
about what the rifle is doing. Something like this HF2500 or something of its ilk. Let's put a marker down. Is absolutely perfect. Because you know the gun is good. Through the same hole. You know the gun is good. And if you are still missing, you now know that the issue is with you and not with the rifle. We're shooting at 30 yards. And that ability to pick up a gun and shoot down range and do pretty much what we're doing here. is proving to yourself that you can still shoot. And sometimes when you've been shooting a Springer and everything is going wrong and you're putting in terrible scores like I've been recently, you just need to go out and prove that you can still range find, you can still read the wind, you can still physically shoot. And maybe there is just something within you that is not working with a Springer. I will definitely go back to Springer's but for the time being, I need to do a reset. And the best way for me to reset is shooting with a PCP. So the big question is, what gun do you buy first? And that is genuinely, it's not something I can tell you. I once had an FTP 900, the one, the rifle up from this. Absolutely amazing gun. But it, for me, it was slightly too heavy. I, I, I couldn't cope with the weight. So I moved to this, the HFT 500. So it's as accurate. Um, it's lighter. And for me, a much better rifle. But I know people much smaller than me who absolutely adore the FTP. I know people who are older than me love the FTP. I know some people who shoot better with an S400 than they do with a Steyr. I know some people who love a BSA uh, Gold Star because it's fully adjustable. Adjustable cheek piece, adjustable, um, uh, adjustable hamster, um, adjustable everything and they can make the gun fit them and because it's a lot shorter and compact it suits their body type. And again, this is why it's good to go to a club and try different rifles. You will pick up a gun and it will fit you and you will go, yeah, this is the rifle for me. So do you go for something like, uh, you know, like a Scorpion or an S400 or an HW100S as your first rifle? If it's the right price for you, yes. Um, an S400, you will have to shoot out the shoulder. Uh, a HW100, you will have to shoot out the shoulder. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It will actually teach you some skills. When you're moving into HFT, if you look at a lot of the top shooters, they all do what you've seen me do many times. They rest the butt of the rifle. But something like a standard S400, you can buy an adjustable butt pad and you can put it on the back. You can put a neoprene cover to give you some extra cheek height. Um, I think it's called a bear tooth. I'll put a picture up. We've shown it many, many times before. And this rifle, this is this hamster. This is just a, a piece of Delrin with some spacers put in, um, made by Pete Dutton. There are plenty of ways to put hamsters, or you can buy aftermarket hamsters from Rowan Engineering and lots of other companies, and you can attach them to your rifles. You can make the rifle work for you. Don't be scared of second hands. Now, again, if you go to a club, there'll be usually people selling rifles second hand. There's always one guy who's got a massive collection who's usually wanting the latest, greatest thing and he's moving some rifles on. But do your research. There are some people who like to uh, buy two or three guns, take the best bits out and build some wreckers and, and sell them on to new people. So talk to the people at the club. See who your mates will recommend is a good person to buy from. People who look after their rifles. And always try before you buy. 
again scopes we're going to do a video uh i think next video we're going to do we're going to look at the new cp um 40 millimeter cb from optisan but we're also going to look at all the different scopes and what their advantages and disadvantages are if i was starting out again i would go i would probably go look around i'd buy something like an s400 mpr or a secondhand HFT 500 because I want the adjustability. Um, an S400, possibly with an aftermarket stock, or you know I'd need to adjust it. Scope-wise, I'd look at either the MTC Connect, the 24 mil, very little parallax error. That's really good for newbies. Um, the obviously the Optisan CP is, is a great rifle. Uh, sorry, is is a great scope. You don't need to start out with spending a thousand pounds on a on a, a vortex or we are march or a loophole you just need to be able to see eight to 45 yards on 10 times magnification and have a multi-aim point reticule that's all you need as long as the rifle can shoot a 20 pinch piece size group at 40 yards that's good enough for what you want one other thing you need to remember though is if you are going to buy a PCP, you need to fill it with air. Now, you can either go for a compressor, like the one we've got here. That's, you can go for an air bottle, or you can go for a pump. Now, some people love using pumps, keeps you fit. Um, I can't, I've got a dodgy back, dodgy knees, and they are a lot of work. Um, it's not like pumping up a bicycle tire, they're a lot of work to do. But speak to your club. Um, I used to be a member of a club called Cambridge HFT. Brilliant club, lovely people. And they've got an air bottle there. And I think they used to charge 50p or a pound to fill your gun with. So you can go down to the club, you can fill up, pay your 50p, charge your rifle. And if you're gonna do a bit of shooting in the garden, before you leave, pay another 50p, charge your, gu charge your gun up again. And now you've got another 100 shots or so, which you can use at home, depending on what rifle you've got. There are always options. Um, so that's pretty much about it you know it, it's, it's not rocket science whatever you buy you'll be able to use it for something don't be scared of the of the cheap gamo springers you know they can be a lot of fun a friend of mine's got a gamo whisper i'll tell you what that's an absolutely cracking rifle 15 yards put up a little spinner a 20 mil spinner bang 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 all day long obviously remember with the spinner you've got to have a backstop absolutely great I've shot expensive rifles, cheap rifles, expensive scopes, cheap scopes and basically it doesn't matter what you're shooting as long as you're shooting. So that's pretty much about it. Um, if there's anything you think we've missed let me know, drop me an email, put it in the comments below. Uh, just get out there, shoot some targets, have some fun, make some friends and start your journey and where you're going to end up isn't where you started but i would strongly recommend a pcp will bring you a huge amount of joy and it will get your skill level up faster than shooting a spring gun but if you want to shoot a spring gun if spring is your thing and you want to go out and buy an hw97 or a tx or an lgu or or any springer then I'll shake your hand, I'll buy you a cup of tea and you're a, you're a braver man than I, Gunga Din, and, and you will have a great time because the spring gun community are some of the nicest people on the circuit and they will guide you and they will help you and you know, uh, you, you'll be part of a fraternity. So I will never ever knock anyone for buying a spring gun as their first gun. Um, you're probably just a better shot than me naturally. Um, so that's about it for today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I know there wasn't a lot of shooting. It was just me yapping away. Um, but we got some really exciting stuff coming up soon. We're going to do more garden shooting. We're going to do uh, more stuff with the HFT 500 because I'm going to be shooting a bit of PCP uh, in the near future. And, uh, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Welcome from Life at the Range. Welcome from Life at a Range. Goodbye from Life at the Range. Ta-da. <laughs>